Welcome everyone to the Chat Black, where we chat about all things black. And I am your host, Sean Witzel. And today we have a special guest. We have poet, writer, novelist, uh, et cetera, Mr. D Revolution. D Rev, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. I appreciate you. Yeah, Absolutely. Man. Good to be here. Yeah, I appreciate having you. I'm ready to dig into your life a little bit and to your, your book that you have um, that's out. But let's 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 go back. Tell us, because I know I have viewers who are familiar with you, but for those who may not be, who is D Revolution? In a nutshell, D Revel is a very complex person. Uh you know, I have lived several different lives in one. I've been this guy, that guy, and this guy over here, you know, just many different personalities, but but in the core of me, I'm a writer. That's who I am. Uh so that's what I try to live by at this point. You know, I, I'm I'm tired of I know some people tired of me saying I'm from Chicago, you know, but I am from Chicago, born and raised, and I've just pretty much changed my life when I moved here to Nashville. And so you how long have you been in Nashville? I came here uh in '96. Been here a minute. Yeah. So you say people might be tired of you mentioning for you're from Chicago, but that's a part of who you are. That's a part of your, your past, your history, your foundation. So I want to know, absolutely. How, huh? how did Chicago impact the artist that you became and the writer you became? Well, because, because of how I grew up and so many things that I was around, it, it, it makes it easier for me to write things because I sing so much. So it gives me a lot of writing material to write things and to say things, you know, one of my best best assets is being able to write what I really feel and not really be bothered with people think. And I think that's actually a, uh, that's a strong point in my writing is, is to just write and not care. And um, I think that comes from being from Chicago and it really, it really uh, makes me, you know, a good writer. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah. It seems like having having the ability to not care about um, what others may think allows the characters and allows the things that you uh, write about to be more honest, and more truthful, and 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 more real. So I think that's definitely an asset. Yeah, absolutely. I enjoy every bit of it. But I want to say this one thing before we move on. I want to thank you for offering me to be a part of the Jefferson Street Project, man. I appreciate you. Uh, reaching out to me for that, man. I need to say that before I forget. No doubt, you were the first person that I thought of when that came up. So I'm super glad that uh, that worked out. I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of that. Yeah. Man, if if you hear what I recorded in the studio a couple of weeks ago, man, like like it's been so wild since I've done a little bit spoke words so on Rusty and I'm a little embarrassed about what I recorded, but I'm going back in the studio to re-record my piece. Uh, but but definitely thank you for that. I know that I haven't seen you in a minute, but we've been knowing each other for a long time. So, you know, I'm always, you, you've always extended a hand to me, you know, whether you was like, come sell instance at my show, or, <laughs> you know, just, you know that. <laughs> no doubt. You know, but I, I needed that little money back then. So I appreciate you, Sean, for real. No doubt, man. I appreciate you. So what led you to Nashville from Chicago? I'm always interested in how people got here. Uh, I got here because one, one, the, one of the main reasons why I moved here was because I wanted to get off the streets. I wanted to get a job and I couldn't find a job in Chicago. And then my mother had just passed away and I had to make a change. The city had took my car. They told my car. So I was just really about to start all over again. And when you have to start over, over again in a city like Chicago, it's not easy. So my brother was living here. He was going to TSU down here. So I came down here to hang out with him and see if I can get, get some work while I was down here. And I came down here and I did get some work. And then I got offered uh, another job that when I, I went back to Chicago, packed my stuff and came back and I've been here ever since. I realized things was just much, much easier in Nashville. A struggle in Chicago is not the same as the struggle in Nashville. It's really not. You know, uh, even when you're struggling here, you would still do a pretty decent compared to up in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So, 
So you talk about your struggle in Chicago, but you came to Nashville and made quite a name for yourself on the spoken word scene. Tell me what that experience was like. Be, uh, were you de-revolution before you got here or was that something that happened while you were in Nashville? No, nah, that was something that happened in Nashville because I was such a, I was such a, um, the reason why it was so easy here because this, this was a smaller town. So I was able to be a little bit more aggressive here and, you know, and kind of, move and shake some things, you know. I can't necessarily say had I not moved to Nashville that I would be or would have become the revolution. I would still be on the streets, probably in prison or even dead, you know. Uh, I think what Nashville did, Nashville gave me the opportunity to sit down and think about my life. And as I started to think about my life, I started to write about it. And then one le thing led to another and here yeah, I am today, you know, writing books. So, you know, it's been a great thing for me, you know. It's been you know, I really do love Nashville, you know, when before, you know, I, I could not fully embrace it, you know, because I'm Chicago to my heart. But, you know, because I moved down here as a grown man. But, you know, but Nashville has been so good to me and so good to my art that that I'm glad I'm glad it was it was a move definitely that that needed to be made. Yeah. Tell me about the name D-Revolution. Where did that come from? Uh. Man, I actually came from a poetry set. I um man, I don't even know if I can say it on this interview. I I, I cracked a joke about uh somebody in my family having an uh interracial relationship. And when I was when I was on the mic, I said, you can call me revolution, you know what I'm saying? Uh, do, you know, now I told because people were calling me D at first. Mm -hmm. And and then when I was on the mic, I said, Well, my last name is Revolution. And it stuck from there. Everybody started calling me D-Revolution or D-Rev for short. So it, it kind of happened really by accident. It wasn't something that I woke up one morning and said, oh, I'm going to call myself D-Revolution. It stuck from that joke. And it, I've been D-Rev or D-Revolution ever since. Mm -hmm. And you weren't just a poet on the scene. You were definitely like you were, a, like you said, a mover and a shaker. You were creating shows, you were putting together shows, like we couldn't say, we couldn't talk about the Nashville poetry scene or Nashville spoken word scene without mentioning your name. Like you were a huge part of what was happening here in Nashville at that particular time. Talk about your experience being a part of this scene and being one of those movers and shakers. Well, my, my desire, the reason why I was such a mover and shaker and still trying to be a mover and shaker with everything that I do, my desire to become something in life was really strong. And if I was, if I had to do poetry shows, anything to take me away from the life I had in Chicago and how I was living, because now I'm becoming a little bit more conscious and I'm seeing things a little bit more clear. And, you know, I was always the guy that people always picked over in Chicago. You know, I was always the guy that broke the window playing baseball. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I wanted to put myself in the position to always be chosen. When I was when I was doing things here in uh, Nashville, as far as the uh, the poetry and the movies, and I wanted to make it where you had to mess with me. Nobody could count me out. Nobody could not mention me. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I I put it in overdrive to make sure uh, that you had to mention D Rev. And and you know I try I wanted to bring other people along with me, and I really. You know, but but the, the 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 foundation of the desire was to be something in life. You know what I'm saying? Just to to say I've done something, to carve out my own little space. Mm -hmm. That's really what it was about, and it still is to a degree. Mm -hmm. So you took that the the writing, the spoken word, and you transitioned into writing books. What made you want to to go into writing books? Well. The, the backdrop to that story is, is this. Um, I started off writing a screenplay. That's where I started. Um, I went from screenplays. When I, I started writing screenplays while I was in Chicago, I went from writing screenplays to uh, writing poetry. The writing in the books is really just kind of take me back to storytelling what I originally loved. You know, I originally went to film school while I was in Chicago. and. Uh, I, I was, you know, I wanted, what I wanted to do was make film. I just didn't have the resources or, or the support to do that. 
but but I didn't need the support or the resource to write a script, to write a screenplay. So I started writing screenplays and then I started writing poetry when I got here and the poetry really took off, you know, performing and it really took off. But now that I've done the spoken word for 20 years, I got to keep it fresh. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to write a book about my life, you know, and once I wrote the first book that I believe you got, uh, the first book, just, I, I got bit by the bug. I was like, I want to write books now because I have a ton of stories I want to write about. And I realized if I write a screenplay, it's just going to sit here on my shelf. But if I write a book, I can get that book into people's hands. You know, uh, I've written several screenplays that only a few people have read because, you know, people don't sell screenplays. But I can write a book uh, and, and, and sell a book and let people read it who read books. So, you know, after I wrote the first book, I really was like, OK, this is what I need to be doing. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the first book before we dive into the second one. The first book is about a man who went from the street corners, uh, went from a lot of ignorant way of living to moving to a new city in the town, who wanted to do something more. That's me. Uh, I Well, I always wanted to do something more, even when I was on the street corners, but I didn't know what it was. But something was constantly nagging at me all the time that I was supposed to be doing something more. And I felt it all the time, you know, and I, I would actually get depressed about it at times. So I just felt like, I mean, I just felt like my wife, my, my life was wasting, wasting because I was just doing nothing, getting up, standing on the corner, doing this, doing that. And in my mind, uh, my brain just really uh, is so was so much bigger than the street corner. So I just really felt like I was wasting my time. And, and, and uh, so the book, really talks about just the inspiration or the, or the desire to want to be something more. And, uh, and, 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 and that's what the book is about. It's a really inspirational book, but it gives you a true life of life in Chicago and some in Nashville and the mentality of somebody who, who was living by his environment, but wanted more, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm sure a lot of uh, young black men, a lot of people, well, anybody can relate to it, not just black people, but anybody can relate to wanting more out of life. Yeah, yeah. Oh, tell us the name of that uh, that book in case people want to want to get that one too. Uh, one Chance to Be a Man. Yeah, yep. it's the it's the book with the little the boy on the cover holding the slits beer can. Everybody <laughs> love that cover, man. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. I got that on my bookshelf right now. Yeah, man, I appreciate the support, man. I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah, so let's talk about your current novel, Half Empty, Half Full. Tell me about these characters. Tell me what inspired this story. What what inspired this story was a dream that I had, uh, man, maybe 15, 16 years ago. And I, um, again, I mean, this is a dream that stayed with me. Uh, uh, And so when I decided that I, after I finished the first book, One Chance to Be a Man, I was like, okay, what am I going to write next? And then I thought about the dream. I said, okay, that's what I'm going to write next. It kind of hit me dead in the chest, like, that's what you need to write next. So that's where it came from. Um, that, that That is where those characters, well, the characters, not all those characters was in my dream. It was just a main part of the book that was in my dream. And I just kind of build the story around that particular part. Mm-hmm. So tell us about the story. The story is about a couple, uh, Niven and Stacy, who has two kids, and they are trying to get married, but Niven pretty much has his issues that he has to deal with, and he's trying to do a lot, a lot, many things so much better, but he makes a lot of decisions out of fear. And with his decision making, he puts his two daughters with Stacy in jeopardy. He puts everybody in jeopardy because he's making rash a quick decision, but um, Stacy really try to keep him on the straight, straight and narrow, you know, the straight road, the straight path to, to think about the stuff that he's doing. And as he starts to try to get his stuff together, it's one initial, is one decision that he has to make. You know, he, he has to make it. And, and that one particular decision can really destroy everything. And then the book t- takes a, a turn 
uh, where where readers don't see from there, you know. Uh, and I I can't I can't tell you that without without giving away the book. So he goes to make this one initial decision that's gonna risk everything, his daughters, himself, everything. But then the book take a uh, the story takes a turn from there. It's a very complex story, and I tell people if, if you're not reading it and really zoned in on it, it lose you. You know, you'll find yourself at the end like. What does this mean? You have to really read the book. It's very, it's a very complex story, but it's probably one of the more complex stories I've ever written. You know, it's a lot of little things that you have to pay attention to, but it was fun to write at the same time. Yeah, um, I like I liked it because um, the I like the beginning. The stakes are high at the very beginning. Like you see the conflict within uh, the relationship. You see some of the circumstances. I mean, it's not, of course, it's not all revealed, but you know that something major is coming. So tell me what made you write this particular story? Why'd you feel like this particular story was right at this time? Well, from a dream that I had several years ago, the message, uh, the message was strong and it stuck with me many, many years. And after I wrote my first book, I had to decide on what I was going to write next. And then that crossed my mind. So, oh, I'm going to write, write this story next. Uh, the the uh, the um, the story is a very strong story, and it has a purpose behind it, and it has a mess, a strong message in it. But the only thing, the message don't smack you in the face. But the the message is absolutely there. If you you know if you're there to pick it up, you know what I'm saying. If if it's meant for you, you will see it, you will feel it. Uh, but if not, it's still going to be an entertaining story. And I try to write with a purpose. So that's why I wrote this story. Actually, this story became something else. Uh, I mean, I put the part in there, the, the part in there where I, what I had to dream about, but the message turned out to be something different. So now I know why that dream was sent to me, you know, because of because of the message in the story. Mm-hmm. You um I've always known you to be a writer. Uh, you have this power in your writing and also in your performance, but you're also very vulnerable and very transparent. So, um, and you talked about you talked about the spiritual slant on your writing as well. So, the word purpose is something that I keep hearing you say. Tell me what you think. What is your purpose here on Earth? Uh, well, to answer the first part of that question. I, I would like to address. I'm so misunderstood, Sean. I've been, I've been so misunderstood. I mean, you know, my personality is what it is, but uh, you know, some people, so many people misunderstood stand me. Nobody, you know, not people really know I went to Catholic school growing up, you know, uh, or that I may meditate every day or something like that. Um, so, so yeah, man. A lot of people don't know that I do try to touch on the the spiritual aspect of it spiritual aspect of things the older I get but the reason why I push purpose is because I look at my own life I look at where I was and to where I am now I'm not sitting over here rich or nothing but you know just the fact that um that I've built somewhat of a legacy and I've been to move and shake in the city I don't have the same mind that I had when I left Chicago I'm a totally different guy I'm a grown man now and I'm you know, when I say I'm a grown man, I mean mentally, because when I moved here, I was a man, but I was still, my mind was still on the corners and, you know, really ignorant and stuff like that. So I think when you seek out purpose, what I try, I try to lead by example. I think when you seek out purpose, you, uh, uh, that, that the purpose finds you, you know, and I think uh, all the things I went through in Chicago, I had to go through those things to be the writer and the poet that I am today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dope, dope. So let's talk about what's next for you. You have this book out. What is the next thing that you're going to be working on? Or you might be already working on it. Yeah, uh, the Jackson Street Project is definitely one of them. Um, I, um, I I was very honored to, 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 be, to be a part of that. You know, I really am. And I'm not just saying I'm really honored to be a part of that. Uh, and then I'm actually going to start on my third book uh, next month. So my third book is going to probably be my biggest challenge. Uh, but, 
you know, I got to do a little research on it and I'm going to just start because what I want to do is be more consistent. You know, I need people to know that, okay, I'm finna, this is what I'm about to do. You know, same way I talk poetry is the same way I'm about to write these books. I'm about to, you know, I want to be more consistent at releasing material and I want to be more consistent in, in, in writing uh, and, and getting out books so I can really gain readers, you know, so I'm working, I'm going to start on my third book next month and hopefully, you know, and that'll be out uh, next year. Dope, dope. Um, not only are you a writer, but you're an entrepreneur, you uh, self-publish your books, um, and, and you, and you, uh, you always, I've always known you to be an entrepreneur, whether you're selling t-shirts or incense, et cetera. So tell us where we can find this book, where can people order it and any other things that you have that people could purchase? Uh, the name of the publishing company I use is Soul Conscious Books. It's the publishing. That's my daughter. It's, after, it's named after her, Soul Conscious Books. But you can purchase the book at Black Books for Us at BlackBooksForUs.com. BlackBooksForUs.com. I'll give you my email address. But BlackBooksForUs.com is where you can get any of my books, uh, The One Chance to Be a Man or Half Empty, Half Full, and soon to be. Uh, some more books on that because what I'm trying to do is bring other artists in on that website you know we can all promote one website instead of uh, authors promoting you got a website I got a website he got a website and then the readers they don't know where to go because they got 10 different websites I'm trying to bring other authors authors in onto the website so they can go to black books for us and pick out the book that they want nice that's what I, that's what I would like to do you know um because we just we need to gel together and, and and be a bigger force in terms of being you know black authors and really getting the public the readers who wants to read black stories to one website and not to 20 25 different websites so i mean and i'm sure there's a lot of readers out there watching this interview right now that's probably gonna be like man i hope so because they get tired of just going everywhere to look for, you know, a book here and there. And then you go to Amazon, you got to put the the title in exactly the way it is. If you mess up one letter, the book don't come. I, you know, just go to Black Books for us and pick you out a book. And so that that's, that's, that's aside from me writing. I'm trying to build that website as well to bring more authors on and to, to really build a, 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 a empire in terms of, Black stories, black books, and have everybody come and come to that one website, you know, instead of making Amazon, man, the richest man in the world, you know, uh, we need to carry our own, you know, so. Dope, dope. Yeah, yeah, man. I um, I think that is an excellent idea. Before we go, shout out social medias or anything else you want to share, if, if you want to share any social media sites. Uh the only thing I want to share is blackbooksforus.com. I'm not, you know, I'm not really great with all the social media stuff. I have Instagram, I have Facebook, but I, I don't know my correct Instagram. You know, I just push the little button on my phone and like, you know, those things tend to, I need to get better with those things. So I'm not going to give out any, any of my social information because I don't want to give out the wrong information. but. My name is D Revolution. You can find me on Facebook under my name. Uh, it should pop right up. And uh, Black Books for Us is where you buy the book. Uh, and before we go, man, I, I want to give you from Kentucky, ain't you, yep. John? Mm -hmm. I, I got a friend that really helped me through the last stretch of my new book that just came out. Uh, she's actually from Kentucky, and I just want to give her a shout out, Angel. I want to give her a shout out and say. Uh, you know, thank you for getting me through the last stretch of the book and really, because, you know, the hard part, when you write a book, I'm sorry, am I going over my time? No, you're good, man. The hard part, the, well, the thing about writing a book is, first, the hard part is actually sitting down and writing it. But the next hardest part is you got to edit it, and then, it, you know, behind that, you got to, well, edit it, and then you got to format it, and then you got to get it out there. And so, you know, I had an encouraging friend, you know, you know, towards because when you get to the end, you got to do all that. You start to get a little, you know, tired, you know, after writing it. And then 
format and you feel like you format you feel like you edited it, it really well and then you still be finding stuff like even with even with the book now you know i've seen a couple of things nothing major i've just seen a couple of things that 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 i need to get corrected you know what i'm saying and and that's after major major editing of, of the book so shout out to angel for you know really being a, a confidant and a friend uh uh, during that time, so you know, I just no doubt. To shout out to Angel. I want to ask you this one last question before we go. How long did it take you to write the book? Um, man, I'm ashamed to say it, man. It took me over a year to write it, but again, not because it takes that long to write a book. It's really about getting your behind up and writing every day, which I didn't do. I would go weeks without writing a thing. And, and, and you know, after you do that so many times, time stretches out and stretches out and stretches out. But once I zoned in on it, I couldn't stop writing, you know? And that, that pretty much happened with every project that I do. I started, get away from it. And then, you know, as I start to really zone in on it and really start writing it, you know, I can't stop. I look forward to getting up and writing it. But, um, one more, one more shout out. I want to give a shout out to Ron Wynn for this, uh, for this article he did on me behind me. Uh, uh, definitely shout out to him for doing a write up on me and my book. I appreciate it. Uh, definitely don't want to uh, forget to do that. So, so you know, I appreciate this platform too, Sean. Some great questions, man. Uh, you got any more? I'm good, man. But I would say, don't be ashamed of that year, man, because you 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 take that year to to get it right. Sometimes people take way more than than um than a year to to write a book. Sometimes people take two or three. So, but kudos yeah. to you, man. Huh? I said kudos to you. Oh, thank you. And I do. Yeah, let me. Say, that's a good point you just made. Let me say this. I'm I'm when you're writing the story, I'm not gonna cut corners. So however long it takes, it takes. You know. But I just know it would have been done sooner had I been more disciplined. But I'm not going to cut corners. I'm going to make sure you got a full story that matches up in the beginning, middle, and end. It takes two years and so well. Because I want the story to be good. Because when it's, you know, everything comes to an end. So eventually you're going to get to the end of that book, you know. Uh, but I just need to be more disciplined to sit down and and write and make it a schedule every day to sit down and do that, you know? And I think that's something that's been, a, you know, kind of a, a rough thing for me is to actually get my butt up and, and write. And, and you know, cause I probably have, you know, uh, way more projects had I, if I was disciplined, so mm -hmm. yeah. All right, man. Well, thank you very much for your time. We I thoroughly enjoyed the interview. We'll get you back on sometime soon, whenever, you know, when the next project comes out, but, uh, Wishing oh, you the best, and um, I want to thank everybody for watching. Peace.